the foundation head repository is the starter kit for Exxon Cloud development with Next.js. When we set up a new project in Exxon Cloud, we create a snapshot of this starter kit in our local or company source code repository. However, the base foundation head gets enriched with the new features and improvements that we also want to benefit from. In this video, I'll show you how to upgrade your repository to the latest foundation head. We created our solution based on the starter kit that's available for XM Cloud, the foundation head repository. Now, there are new features that we would like to utilize, for example, the bring your own code feature of XM Cloud components. So we have to get the latest changes of the foundation head also into our solution. When checking the documentation, the recommended path forward is check out the latest Sitecore starter foundation, compare your solution to the latest starter foundation code, update your code accordingly, and then test the solution. So let's do that. First, we go to the provided URL on github.com slash sitecollabs slash xmcloudfoundationhead and check out this one to the local file system. Next, we make sure we have the latest main branch of our solution downloaded to our local and create a new branch for any changes that we will perform later on. When I compare the two solutions with a file comparison tool like WinMerge, I see that within the source folder, I have a company folder that's only available in my custom solution and an SXA starter folder that is only available in the vanilla foundation head solution. That is because in episode four of this series, I renamed the app folder to the project name, which is company. I also changed all occurrences of SXA starter accordingly to stay consistent. In order to simplify the comparison, I will rename the folder in the vanilla foundation head solution to company as well. By the way, I recolored my VS code that has the vanilla foundation head open to blue using the Peacock plugin so it is easier to separate the two solutions in VS code. When comparing the two solutions again, we can see now that we can compare the files inside the app folder as this has the same name now. It is recommended to start with a package.json file. I can see that the name and the app name attribute are different, which is expected. But also the JSS version is different, which I want to update. Also, some of the referenced npm packages are of lower versions, some have been removed and some have been added. So as I have not changed anything yet beside renaming from SXA starter to company, I can take over the changes from the right to the left side in most of the cases. Of course, further down the road in a project, you need to be aware of your customizations to not overwrite these functionalities. Once done, let's run the command npm install to install the new package versions accordingly. There are some vulnerabilities reported that are the same ones reported on a vanilla foundation head repo. We could run npm audit to analyze the issues and an npm audit fix, but that would set back some of the npm package versions. This needs to be improved, but should not stop us for now. Now that the package.json file is fine, let's go from top to bottom. In the .NET tools.json file, there is a new Sitecore CLI version that we should update. In the .git folder, there are, for example, git-related logs that can be ignored for now. Also, the git-related configuration is different as both solutions originated from different repositories. So, also this can be ignored, but it's definitely worth checking it. In the .sitecore folder, there are a couple of changes that we need to take over. For example, the root configuration file .schema.json and the user configuration .schema.json. I'll fast forward from here. Feel free to skip the next two and a half minutes.
so I spend approximately half an hour going through all the files. During that process, WinMerge has created a lot of backup files of the files I adjusted. I just search for those files in the Windows Explorer and remove them. Let's see if my app still builds. In the terminal, I run npm run build. Looks like there's an error in the bootstrap ts as it cannot find the generate component factory. I must have done something wrong when merging all the files. So I can see that for some reason I exchanged the comment but not the actual import statement. So instead of importing the component builder generation, I still import the generate component factory. There's another occurrence of generate component factory in a comment which I leave unchanged for now. Run npm run build again. And this time it succeeds. I want to see if the app starts, so I run npm run start connected. And yes, the site comes up. Let me stop the app and check if also my local Docker setup works. So I run the init script, passing my license file path and the admin password again. Great. Now let's run the app script. I authenticate and choose an organization. I need to choose my organization again. Works. So let's check content editor. The site on my local instance running on Docker does not exist. We have not deserialized the items into the environment yet. To do that, in the terminal I run .NET Sidecore push, passing the environment name that's configured in my user.json file. In my case, that is default. I also want to see if Experience Editor works. It seems I get an error message stating that the JavaScript services application was not found for the home item. So I need to check the configuration for it, which is handled in items. Navigating to System, Settings, Services, Rendering Hosts, I can see that there is a default rendering host configured. That item was created during the environment creation process. And it contains already all details about connecting to the XM Cloud internal rendering host or editing host. This rendering host is configured for my site. I can prove that by navigating to my site, settings, site grouping, company dev. Inside that item, I find the field predefined application rendering host, which is set to default, meaning referencing the item I just showed. There is no other option at the moment. To change that and not override the existing configuration, I create a new rendering host config item and I name it local. Now I fill in the details to connect my local rendering host running on Docker. I can find those details in my Docker Compose file. If not changed, my server side rendering engine application can be accessed via HTTP rendering port 3000. The endpoint URL is the same, adding the path. API editing render. My application name can be found in the package.json and this is company dev. I save the changes and go back to my site configuration item. In here I select my newly created editing host, save and open experience editor again. Now experience editor loads. It's not showing any content as we did not configure the serialization to pull any content. If Experience Editor does not load for you, check the rendering host configuration again or restart your Docker containers by running the down script and the up script again. If you still face issues, check your .n file and compare it with your previous one. We changed a lot of files in this session, but I also created a new item for my rendering host that might be useful for my team that maybe also needs to run XM Cloud locally. 
Currently, we only pull the default rendering host, but we also want to pull the new local rendering host configuration. Therefore, I navigate to the rendering host.module.json file and add a new include entry, changing the name and the path. I save the changes. So, let me pull the latest changes. It is important that I only pull the new rendering host item, but not the site grouping item that I changed, because I do not want to change this item on my XM Cloud instance when deploying my changes. Therefore, the site grouping item should only be created, but never updated. I run .NET Sitecore pull, passing the environment name default. So I pull from my local Docker instance. Let's check if the item is there. Looks good. Now let's stage our unstaged files and commit the changes passing the comment updated solution from 21.1.6 to 21.5.0. I publish the branch. Done and ready to be merged to the main branch. I merged my latest changes to the main branch. That triggered an automatic deployment to my XM Cloud instance because I set it up to do that in the very beginning. Feel free to check out episode 3 where I set up the environment. When I navigate to the cloud portal and open the XM Cloud Deploy app, I can select my project and the dev environment. I can see that a deployment has been triggered today and succeeded. Let's check if Pages still looks good. Seems everything runs smoothly. To summarize, I updated my solution that originated from the Foundation Head repository to the latest version of it. This way I got all new features that have been implemented by Sitecore in the meanwhile. I did that because I want to make use of the Bring Your Own Code feature of the Component Builder. As you've seen, my solution still does not have many customizations from the original Foundation Head. However, further down the project, there is probably more to look after. To make these updates easier, try not to override Foundation Head files directly. In some cases where you have to do that, use comments to denote customizations. If you just want to compare the code of two vanilla Foundation Head versions, you can create two fresh JSS apps using the version you currently use and the one you want to update to. This is described in our documentation as well. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.